In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the oscilloscope. Uh, this is a Tektronix uh, TDS 2012, um, but pretty much all oscilloscopes behave more or less the same way. Once you master the controls of one of them, you'll be able to figure out any other oscilloscope pretty quickly. You turn it on up here with a button, and it takes a couple minutes to turn on and boot up and check itself out. You'll get a screen like this. It's got a graph. The x-axis is going to be time, and the y-axis is going to be voltage. So the oscilloscope is fundamentally a device that can plot voltage as a function of time, whereas the meter is just measuring it at a particular point in time, and your eyeballs have to watch the screen and watch the digits as they change. The oscilloscope will plot it on a graph and let you see things that change very, very quickly. So to demonstrate this, let me just hook it up real quick. So I'm going to connect the probe, and I'll show you how to do this in just a second. But if I go over here and change the voltage on the power supply, um, you'll see the graph go up and down as I wiggle the voltage output here. And so that's what an oscilloscope does for us, except the great thing is that it doesn't just do it for human visible time scales. Uh, it can go way, way, way faster than we can see. In this case, uh, this one can do 100 megahertz um, and simple samples at one giga sample per second, so taking a billion samples measurements of that voltage per second, and it can measure signals that are changing as fast as 100 megahertz. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at how we'd measure a faster signal and hook it up. Okay, so here we've got the oscilloscope probe and a simple circuit that we're going to try to measure what's going on here. The oscilloscope probe has two parts. Um, again, it's measuring a voltage, so you have to measure between two different points. So one of those points is going to be with this clip here. Um, that's traditionally clipped onto ground, whatever the, the negative baseline for the circuit is. And then the other point is going to be used to measure the voltage relative to ground. Right, so remember that you can't measure a voltage at a single point. It's always a differential voltage between some point and some other place. And so if you forget the ground clip, you will get measurements, sort of, um, but they will be wrong and they'll be confusing and you'll likely go down some rabbit trails you didn't mean to. So always remember the ground clip first. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook that up. And in this case, I'm using the blue ground rail on my circuit here as ground. So I'll just plug a black wire in there. Obviously it doesn't have to be black, but that helps remind me that it is ground. And then I'll just clip the alligator clip onto that wire. Okay, now I can use the oscilloscope probe to go ahead and just start poking points on the breadboards, or I could poke points on my circuit. Um, if you want to, you could also use an alligator clip to clip onto here, um, but usually it's easier to just use the probe directly. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just stick it in this point here at the top of the LED, and we'll take a look and see what's going on there. Okay, so here's the oscilloscope showing what's going on with our signal. And clearly, it's moving way too fast for us to be able to see what's going on. So we need to zoom in and actually try to analyze the signal. And we're going to do that with all of these controls on the right side of the oscilloscope. And at first, it's pretty intimidating. There's a whole lot of buttons, and it's not clear what's going on. But once we break it down, it's not too bad. Okay, so there's going to be vertical controls. So there's two different channels, a yellow channel and a blue channel. and this. We can control the position with this little knob up here. So normally we'll leave it right at zero. Um, but if, you have, if you're trying to display two signals at once, sometimes it's helpful to move one of them up or down. And then we can control the voltage scale um, with this knob. So that's controlling the y axis, but basically just the scale on the y axis. Um, and if you look, it says two volts here on channel one. That means each of these dotted boxes, or the grid lines for the y-axis, are two volts apart. Okay, and so for this signal, it looks like it's maybe two and a half boxes, so about 3.3 volts, um, which is what we would expect for the FPGA. Okay, then the horizontal controls. The important one we're going to use here is the horizontal scale. So this is going to just change the x-axis scale, the time scale. Uh, right now, it says 250 milliseconds per box, per division. Um, so 
say four boxes here would be one second. And we can control that just by changing the knobs. So let's zoom in. So now this is 100 milliseconds per box, 50 milliseconds per box, 25 milliseconds per box. Let's keep going. All right, now we're starting to see something that isn't just a blur. And let's keep going. OK, here we are. Now we've got a stable signal. And it says one millisecond per box. Again, 2 volts per division on the y-axis. So with 1 millisecond per division, the signal looks like a square wave where it's half up and half down. And it's up for 1 millisecond and down for 1 millisecond. So the entire period of this signal here is going to be 2 milliseconds, um, which would be a frequency of 500 hertz. And sometimes, if the oscilloscope is able to lock onto a signal, it will actually just tell you what the frequency is, which is pretty helpful. Uh, it says 499.3 something ish hertz. So just about 500 hertz, like we expected. Okay, so that's the vertical position control, or the vertical axis control. Again, mostly scaling um, here. So we can move down and say if we had a much larger signals, we could look at the 5 volts per division or even 10 volts per division. But again, leaving it around 2 works pretty well for this kind of signals we're dealing with here. And then your horizontal scale will let you zoom in and out on the x-axis. There's a couple other things that are useful to know. So if the oscilloscope starts up in a situation where you only see like a blue line, you're looking at the blue channel, uh, the channel number 2, and you plugged your circuit into the yellow channel, channel number 1, um, you can turn the channel off just by pressing the button a couple of times, and then turn the channel on that you want just by pressing once. And then the final column here that you'll sometimes care about is the trigger. So this signal is running really fast, and we need some way, the oscilloscope needs some way to determine what to put in the middle here. And that's going to be done with the trigger. So the main trigger control, there's a level, level, and you'll see a little arrow on the right um, that is saying when the voltage rises or falls past this level, then go ahead and center that on the screen. Okay, so um, if we put that here, just sort of in the middle of our signal, we can use the trigger menu to control what kind of transition it's looking for. So here we're triggering on an edge for channel 1. Uh, if we'd switch to channel 2, we might have to reconfigure that to, to point to channel 2. Here it says the slope is the rising edge. So I could push that again, and now it will trigger on the falling edge. And you see we're getting some kind of glitches here. So let's just tweak the level a little bit, little bit and see if that helps it steady out. And now you can see that it's putting the falling edge of that in the center of the screen. So usually rising edge is sufficient. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, but sometimes there's cases maybe you want to look at the falling edge uh, because that's where something interesting starts happening. Up here, you'll see a little button labeled Auto Set. Um, this will automatically try to determine what the signal is and create some reasonable x and y axes for that. Okay, please don't ever use this button. Okay. And the reason for that is if you don't know what kind of signal you're looking for, then it's very hard to trust the results of auto set. So I've seen students many times who will just press auto set, and what it picks up is not the signal at all. It's like some 60 hertz noise from the power supply in the room, like just the electrical power in the walls, or noise coming from the fluorescent lighting or something. And because auto set showed that to them, they assume that's their signal, and then they start trying to work based on that. And if you don't know like what kind of frequency or what kind of voltage is roughly to expect, out of your circuit, then you should stop and think about that and don't just press auto set. Okay, that's the basics of the controls. Um, you can poke around in the menus and you'll figure out some more things as we go and we'll show you some more advanced techniques later in the course. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or any of the TAs and we'd be happy to show you how to get the most that you can out of the oscilloscope.